the Ngorongora Crater, maybe the only place on Earth that can be compared to the Garden of Eden. Inside the crater is a perfectly preserved ecosystem, which thousands of different species of animals call home. It is one of the most unique wildlife destinations in the world, where every single subject is dwarfed by the gigantic crater rim. And it is home to some of the rarest animals in East Africa, some of which have been poached to near extinction elsewhere, but can safely live here in the protection of the crater. I previously began my East Africa trip in Kenya, and after an amazing few days in Amboseli, I crossed the border into neighboring Tanzania. It was a long drive from the border to the crater, but it was amazing to look out the window and see the sights of the Great Rift Valley along the way. We even drove past the famous Lake Manyara National Park, well known for its tree climbing lines. But we were headed to the crater, and after six hours we had arrived to the park gate. From there, it was a breathtaking drive around the crater rim, which was like nothing I had ever seen before. Finally, we reached the main viewpoint where we could get a panoramic view of the entire crater. We then checked into our rooms at the Ngorongora Serena Lodge, which had an equally impressive view just from the balcony. Wow, so I've made it to uh, Ngorongora Crater, and that is my view. That is absolute insanity that I have this room with this view. It's crazy. The following morning, we began our first safari in the crater, which glowed beautifully in the pre-dawn light. The foggy descent down the cobbled road is unlike any other game drive that I had ever been on. I've been to a lot of different places all across Africa, but seeing the expanse of the Ngorgora crater in front of me left me speechless. The road down seemed endless, but I knew that around any quarter we could find something incredible. And we did! Right off of the main road, we found a pride of lions that were moving through the tall grass. I later found out that this grass is actually an invasive weed that is taking over the crater, but the lions love it because it can conceal them more easily when it's time to hunt. The crater is quite cold in the morning, so the lions were waiting until the sun rose to get moving which gave me time to snap some amazing shots of them. Further down the road, we saw the rest of the pride in the distance, where one female was moving with her cub. Some nearby zebras started to make their way past her, and suddenly her interest changed and she began to crouch down in case the opportunity for a hunt presented itself. So many zebras walked past her, and even young foals that should have been easy targets slipped right by. But even if it looks easy for us, Lions don't want to expend the energy for a hunt unless they know that they stand a good chance of being successful. We then left the lions and looked for other subjects while the light was still good. We came across a funny looking quarry bustard, the largest flying bird in Africa, that was in a full mating display. This one was clearly trying to find himself a girlfriend but it seemed like no females nearby were overly interested. Sad for him, but cool photos for me. From the plains, we headed towards the crater's large fever tree forest. We had hoped to find elephants here to photograph against the forest backdrop, but all I found was one zebra just outside the tree line. We started to make our way to a spot to have breakfast, when out in the distance something caught my driver's eye. It was a black rhino, one of the most rare residents that call the crater home. Unfortunately the light was too harsh and it was too far off, so we left it for now. We decided to eat at nearby Lake Magadi, where we found a zebra that had probably seen better days. 
The other lakefront residents were thousands of lesser flamingos, which like to hang around soda lakes and eat the nutritious algae found here. It's nice to enjoy your breakfast while flamingos fly by, and I'd try to photograph them in between bites. After breakfast, we found a bull elephant, which I knew I had to photograph in order to show the scale of how big the crater rim is. Nearby, there were some lions sleeping inside of a drainage pipe, but no good photos, so we headed off again. We had a full day here, so we decided to drive further to a new area when we found another surprise. A big male black rhino was spotted out in the open, and much closer than the one we saw earlier. Seeing a black rhino against the crater was on my bucket list, and I finally made it happen. Black rhinos are notoriously shy creatures, and once other vehicles started to stop by, the rhino seemed less happy to move any closer. They are one of the most endangered animals in all of Africa. And while they are rare, the crater is probably the best place to find them in the wild. So I was definitely going to sit and wait until I got my shot. With the rhino not coming any closer, we gave it some space and photographed some other subjects close by while keeping an eye on it. As we sat and waited for the rhino, a herd of wildebeest came running by, which provided some brief excitement. While most of the big herds were in the Serengeti, some wildebeest do make it into the crater. They're not always the easiest to photograph, but just watching wildebeest run across the plains is still enjoyable. We also drove past a small weaver nest, where the birds were hard at work and adjusting the branches in the midday heat. These nests can be huge and complex creations, but the birds seem to know the system of building them by heart. I'm not much of a bird photographer, but seeing these little guys work definitely caught my attention. As we sat waiting for the one black rhino to get closer, I noticed that there were a handful of other rhinos on the opposite side, slowly inching their way towards a nearby road. I now had a decision to make. Stay with the large male, or try to go after the other rhinos. I decided to go after the other rhinos, and given how rare it is to photograph a rhino in the crater, I chose to spend the entire afternoon drive waiting for one to come close to the road. But just as they started to head towards the road, something spooked them and they ran the other way. It was frustrating to say the least, but I had to remind myself that these are super shy animals that usually try to avoid people as much as possible. I often say that there are no guarantees in wildlife photography, and I had already made my peace to spend the drive waiting for them. Sadly, it was time to call it a day in the crater, but what a great start it was. Full day safaris can be exhausting, but in order to maximize your time in the crater itself, I feel like a full day is totally worth it. The next day, we would only be doing a morning safari, so once again, we descended into the crater before sunrise. The light hit the crater rim like a flashlight, which was the most beautiful sunrise I'd ever seen in my life. In the same area that we saw lions the previous day, I saw one large male peeking out of the tall grass. I had no time for video and only grabbed one quick photo before he walked past us. We had heard word that someone had spotted a rhino close to the road on the other side of the crater and raced towards the scene. When we got there, there was no rhino, just some hyenas and jackals eating scraps from something they had hunted during the night most likely. It seemed like the hyenas were probably about to head to bed after a long night out, so we left them and moved on. We ended up running into more herds of wildebeest, who were grouping up in large numbers. There is less invasive grass here, so the wildebeest prefer this area because of the more natural vegetation. The second day of rhino photography wasn't really panning out. It was mostly a hyena and wildebeest kind of day. 
Still, there's no such thing as a bad day in the crater, and I came away with some great photos in the morning regardless. We tried one last time to find elephants in the fever forest, but once again, no luck. Sadly, that was the end of our drive in Ngorongora Crater, but it was still an incredible experience. Thank you all so much for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like, subscribe, and follow me on social media for more. In the next video, we head to the Endless Plains and visit the most famous national park in all of Africa. So stay tuned.